Hey, I'm Drew Paul Bell, and today we're doing some Q&A. I think I can knock out a few of these questions in one video. So we're just gonna crack into it. Juan Yanez wants to know, um, he says he's, going, he's already started school, but he's at a, uh, sounds like he's at a community college and wants to know if he should take his math classes at the community college and then transfer to the four-year university when he goes there for architecture. And uh, Juan, I answered your question in the comments, but just for anybody else out there, um, you need to go ahead and call the university that you plan on going to and ask them if they accept those math classes from that school. They have accreditation levels and like some schools are accredited and some aren't within like the university system of the, of the state usually. But you need to check that off of them. And the reason why is because you can invest a lot of time in this class and then it not transfer over, right? And, and, you, and you know that. But what's more important about calling them is that I, I don't think it would be unreasonable if you like even got a written, uh, a written letter from somebody at the registrar to, to say that they would accept credit for that class and get it signed. And the reason why is because universities can screw you over, especially registrars. They have no hesitation in doing that when they feel like they can and when they can get you to spend your, you can make, they can make you spend your money at their university instead of having spent it somewhere else. I have a major beef with registrars and a lot of the administrative, a lot of the administrative offices at universities. I, I really get frustrated with the way that they treat students and the way that they treated me and several of my classmates. I know a lot of people who took math classes at a technical school across town, and then when they transferred to Southern Poly, they said, no, we're not gonna take that. So I, I can't say for sure when you can, but call the people who know and get it in writing. I highly advise you to do that. Juan, as well as several other people, also asked about compensation. How much money do architects make? Uh, this is a major question, man. Like, how much do architects make? Luckily, there is a there's a survey that the AIA does. Um, I think it's about every two years, and Architect Magazine publishes kind of the general information about it. There's a full detailed report you can purchase, but there's a lot of information online that you can find for free. The only problem is you have to know to look for it. So I'm gonna include that link down below in the description. Go ahead and click through that, and that will show you the breakdown of like several different positions and as well as like several different states. So you, you can go click through this infographic and find the information that you need. Just pour over that for your own place, wherever you plan on working and, um, and whatever positions. I know I think at the very bottom are like three levels of interns. That is usually what you're gonna go into when you're fresh out of school. When you don't have a degree, excuse me, when you do have a degree, probably, but you don't have a license. And you're gonna be entering in those, those levels your first few years out, that's just the way that it goes. But as you can tell from the graph, uh, the higher on up that you get, you, you, you can make plenty of money. But anyway, I'll let you pour over that uh, and get those stats for yourself. Our friend Ridwan, I think I'm pronouncing that right, wants to know, what university did you get your degree? Uh, this is actually a funny story. I went to, all right, so I went to Southern Polytechnic State University. It was up in Marietta, Georgia, which is just outside of Atlanta. My university got merged with a with the university at the road, Kennesaw State University. So it's, it's kind of funny, my school doesn't really exist anymore, which some people were, were really mad about. But I actually think it's kind of awesome. Like I'm in this weird limbo. I get to tell people it was like an ama perfect school, amazing, nothing wrong with it at all, and no one's gonna be able to fact check me in five years from now. All right, our friend I am X 830 wants to know, uh, do architects design the pipes, uh, the pipeways and stuff like wirings, or is that other person's work? All right, so, Pipes. We don't do at my firm personally. We don't do. Uh, we don't design the plumbing. The plumbing is usually designed by the plumber or um, a plumbing specialist, and that's typically the same subcontractor that's going to be working on the installation. And so the they usually come from the uh, from the contractor. We don't necessarily know the plumber to call up, but uh, but we know the contractor. The contractor will a lot of times get those drawings from the plumber. We may need things like riser diagrams to get a building permit. He shows, these will show like which fixtures are on which level and the size of the pipes going between all those. So we don't design the size of the pipes, but we'll, we will get that information. And some of the things that we have to do requires making sure that there's enough room for those pipes within the floor system or the walls. So for example, if you have a wall, or if you have a floor that's, um, we have, we're dealing with this right now, we have a floor that's 12 inches deep and we have an inch and a half on the top of, um, flooring, we have uh, decking and then flooring, and then we're using uh, 10 inches, 10 inch deep steel structure, and then a half inch gypsum board 
on the bottom. And so we have 10 inches of free space in the floor to be able to run ducks, but or ducks or pipes. But if if the pipes need to be bigger than that, then then that's going to be a problem. Okay, so we have to be able to identify that. We don't size it off the bat, but we get the sizes and we have to make sure that it actually fits in the architecture. Um, you also asked about wirings. We design, we'll lay out like uh, the electrical plans and show which lights, which light fixtures go where, which light switches. We'll show duplexes and uh, and wall outlets, floor outlets, pop up outlets, uh, GFIs. We have to indicate all those different things, but we usually show that as like a diagram. So we'll have um, kind of these swirly lines going to somewhere else on the plan where we have a particular light fixture. We don't necessarily lay out where in the wall it goes. We're not that specific because it doesn't need to be. You know where the switch has to be, you know where the lights have to be. So you'll lay that out, but then even that too has physical restrictions on it. We have, it seems like every project, we have a sliding door into, a po we have a pocket door into a bedroom and you want to put the light switch right inside the pocket door, but then the pocket door is in the pocket, the pocket door is in the wall right there. So you don't have room. You have to put it on the other side, but if that's coming up against the, against the wall uh, at an intersection, then you might not have room there either. And you have to be able to know where the framing is going to go and the size of the switch box to be able to guarantee that's going to fit. So a lot of times that comes out of the detailed drawings. So that's a long way to answer your question. You have to be able to work with it, but you don't necessarily have to be the one sizing it. That sizing usually comes from specialists. All right. So. Thanks for the questions. Um, if you have questions that you want to have answered, leave them in the comments down below. I read all of those. You can also send me messages here on YouTube. And I'm trying to get something set up where you guys can send me emails if you want to type out longer questions because I've had a few requests for that. And uh, I'll keep you updated on that as soon as it's available. Uh, until then, uh, I read all the questions, I'll read all the comments, and uh, I'll be glad to pick it up and answer it in some form of a video or another or, or in the comments. So I hope this helps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you next time.